Welcome students who are taking financial accounting. Um, in this series of videos, we are uh, covering the chapter three exercises, the group B uh, problems that were uh, assigned to you in the digital study guide. Um, and before we get started, as always, if you don't understand something, you know, if you can pause and rewind the video and watch it again. Um, because of the nature of accounting, it, you know, you have to understand the concepts um, before you apply them to the, the particular situation. So if you're still not getting something, maybe it will help for you to go back over and rewatch the introduction videos to accounting and bookkeeping, or maybe some of the Matt Fisher videos that were on YouTube, um, and definitely the theory videos that accompany each chapter. Um, and if you still don't uh, understand the application side of it, then uh, of those concepts, then feel free to you know contact an instructor either via email or you know by telephone. And so with that said, let's uh, move on to actually doing the problems for that are assigned for chapter three here, uh, the exercises, group B. All right, so exercise three dash twenty eight B. Um, it's a, these are adjusting journal entries, unearned revenue, and accrued revenue. So suppose you started up your own landscaping business. A customer paid you 170 in advance to mow his or her lawn while he or she was on vacation. You perform landscaping services for a business, but the business hasn't paid you the $375 fee yet. So okay, that's uh, one customer, you mowed his lawn, um, uh, paid you 170 to mow his lawn in advance, and then you performed landscaping uh, services for a local business that hasn't paid you the 375 yet, so that's a second transaction. Um, a third one is a customer pays you $80 in cash for lands for landscaping services. So those are like three transactions, all right? They're all separate from each other. Answer the following questions about the correct way to account for your revenue under accrual basis accounting. All right. um, they're specifying accrual basis here because on a cash basis system, uh, only when you uh, pay out cash or you receive cash do you actually make a journal entry. And as you can see, these first two entries, um, you're not affecting cash at all. The third one, yes, you are, but the first two you're not, so you're using accrual basis accounting. Um, it says here, one, name the accounts used to record these events, and two, prepare the journal entries to record the three transactions. Well, uh, let's just, you know, it's easier just to make the journal entries so that you can see what accounts you used. So um, I'm just going to skip number one here, all right, um, because you just, when you're making the journal entries, you know what accounts you're using. All right, so this first transaction is a customer paid you 170 in advance to mow his lawn, um, for his or her for his or her lawn while he or she was on vacation, All right? So, in making a journal entry, you know, if you watch the theory videos, you know that I ask the first question: Am I affecting cash? And the answer to that is yes. All right, because why? Um, you're receiving $170 in cash. So, um, if I have a balance here for my cash account. And I'm receiving 170. That means um, my cash is going up by 170. And if I know that cash is an asset, and I increase my assets on the uh, debit side, that means I'm going to debit my cash for 170 dollars. And since I um, I'm debiting something, and debits have to equal credits, that means I have to credit something else. Well, the question becomes, what am I going to credit for 170 dollars? Well, we have to think through the transaction. It says you were paid in advance, okay? And you know that's you're performing a service, so that would be revenue. But you're being paid in advance. You haven't performed that service yet, so you can't recognize the revenue, okay? Um, so is you know does that money belong to you? Well, yeah, cash is on the asset side, and that's something you own is the cash, but what if the you know before you perform that service? What if the customer says, oh, "I want my money back"? Okay, well you owe them the money, all right. So the other half of that transaction, you know, you you know, it, uh, you're not looking at assets. You'd be looking at liabilities, okay? 
because you still owe that money. It's not actually yours until you actually perform the service itself. So when you're looking at your liability accounts, you would have probably an account called unearned service revenue. Okay, and you would credit for the 170. Um, and that would be the journal entry for that uh, first transaction. Okay. Now, for the second transaction, it says you perform landscaping services for a local business, but the business hasn't paid you the $375 fee yet. Okay. Well, am I affecting cash? No, because you haven't received the $375 yet. So you ask yourself the second question, Do I am I affecting accounts receivable or accounts payable? And the question is yes, because why? Ah, I'm affecting you know, accounts receivable. I'm billing the customer. So if my accounts receivable was this much before, and now it's increasing by 375, well, accounts receivable, you treat it just like you do cash. I mean, it's an asset, and we increase our assets on the debit side. So I'm going to debit my accounts receivable for 375 and the other half of the entry because debits have to equal credits what's the other half of the entry well I'm not affecting an asset you know I'm not a, you know it's not something I own it's not a liability I don't owe anybody it's not equity because it's not an investment in the business you know uh, my only other choices are revenues or expenses and of course it's revenues because I'm performing a service okay so um, if I look under my revenue accounts I'd see something like service revenue and I'd credit that for 375 and that would be my journal entry right um, and the last one it says okay so that's that one okay um, it says the customer pays you $80 cash for landscaping services okay so I'm gonna stick this one up here in the corner right so you know they're paying you $80 cash for landscaping services. Am I affecting cash? Yes, because you're receiving $80, so your cash is increasing. And this is just like this first transaction. You know, you're going to end up debiting cash because your cash increases by uh, $80. And then since debits have to equal credits, you're going to credit something else. What are you doing? Well, you're performing the service, so that would be, you know, you're going to record that revenue. So that's a credit to service revenue for eighty dollars and that's your third entry okay now you know if you wanted to go back and name the accounts used to record these events well obviously you're using cash you're using service revenue you're using unearned service revenue and you're using accounts receivable okay so I went down oh, there's my cash service revenue I used cash already okay here's my unearned service revenue there's my accounts receivable you know those are the different accounts that we're using okay so that's it for 28b All right, uh, 29b okay let's see here um, let me think about this, whether I should start a new video or not. Uh, maybe. Okay, uh, let's see. Calculate the missing amounts for each of the prepaid insurance situations. Okay, so I'll do this and then uh, in this video. Um, for situation A, generalize the adjusting entry. Consider each situation separately. Okay, so. We're going to calculate the missing amounts for each of the prepaid insurance situations. So um, for situation A here, we have a beginning prepaid insurance amount of 400. The payments for prepaid insurance during the year are 1,500, right? So um, I have 400 and then I'm being paid 1,500. So the total amount to account for is 1,900. So this is 1,900. Okay, so my ending prepaid insurance is 700. So if this is the beginning and this here, you know, we want to have the ending being 700, well, how much is the difference, right? Well, the difference between the two is $1,200, right? 
so my insurance expense would be twelve hundred dollars right now it says for situation for situation a journalize the adjusting entry okay so um, if we think about it and draw a T account here's my prepaid insurance right and here's my insurance expense and my prepaid starts out um, with 400 okay and then we add it an additional 1500 so our balance at that point in time is $1900 okay now um, we want the balance to end up being seven hundred dollars oops wrong side sorry we want the balance to end up being seven hundred dollars well if my prepaid insurance has a debit of nineteen hundred well that means I have to credit it you know credit the twelve hundred dollars in order to get down to seventeen hundred right so I have to credit prepaid insurance for twelve hundred dollars and since my debits have to equal credits I have to debit something else and we know we're debiting insurance expense right for twelve hundred so I debit twelve hundred to insurance expense and that's my journal entry okay when it comes to these kinds of uh, entries whatever account you know I have for a prepaid whether it's an insurance expense account or prepaid advertising, then I'd be looking at advertising expense. They're generally named the same. The expenses all generally name the same thing because why? You're prepaying something, but then when you use it during the normal course of business, that's an expense. And so generally, the prepaid is going to be named the same thing as the expense. So if I had like prepaid rent, well then most likely on my charter accounts I have a rent expense account. If I have you know. Uh, like I said, prepaid advertising, then I'm going to have an advertising expense account. Okay, so that's the entry um, that we need to make for situation A. And then, of course, situation B, C, and D, the reason why they're not asking you to do that is because the entries are going to be exactly the same, but just for different amounts. Okay, all right, so situation B. Right, so we're starting out with 600, okay, and our payments, we don't know how much our payments are, and so we don't know how much we're being accounted for, but our ending down here is uh, 400, and our prepaid insurance is 1200. So what we're doing is um, we, we have to back into this, okay, just like here where we had, we're taking 400 plus 1500 to get 1900 right then we're subtracting and the reason why I'm, I'm doing this like this is because we have to pay attention to our pluses and minuses here then we're subtracting 700 in order to get 1200 well if I had 400 and I was subtracting if I end up with 400 and I was subtracting 1200 from the previous number that means I would add these two together in order to get sixteen hundred dollars okay and then of course if I had six hundred and I have to add something in in order to get sixteen hundred that means I'd have to add a thousand so um, six hundred plus one thousand is sixteen hundred and then sixteen hundred less four hundred Whoops, wrote those numbers the wrong way. Sorry about that. Uh, less 400 gives me 1200. Yeesh. All right, so yeah, the 1600 less the 400 gives me 1200. All right, so let me just go back over that again. All right, because obviously I wrote the numbers in wrong. All right, um, we start out with 1600. We don't know how much this amount is and I, we don't know how much that amount is but then we subtract we're going to subtract 400 remember this is adding here right in order to get twelve hundred dollars right so working with this problem here we have to work it backwards 
okay I mean if we're working at four words we're, we're going to take 600 and we're going to add a number and then we're going to subtract a number but working backwards we're going to do just the opposite okay we're going to add here and subtract here okay if we're working backwards in this direction okay um, not all problems uh, accounting situations you're going to work from top to bottom I mean you know especially when you're trying to you're filling in you're backing into information um, you know you have to know which direction you're going and, and of course work accordingly so if I'm in this particular situation I can't work forward I have to work through the problem backwards so working backwards 12 plus uh, four, 1200 plus 400 is 1600 and then I'd have to subtract the 600 from the 1600 to get a thousand right here. Okay. Right. I hope you understood that. Pause it and rewind and watch it again if you have to. Okay. All right. Let's see. C. We don't know how much this is. And this is 2200. And this is, we're going to add that. Uh, the 3300 to give us 5500 here. Okay, so this is 5500. We haven't totally accounted for. Oops, sorry about that. I'm doing this wrong. Yee, I have to stop doing this. All right, so um, that's the total to be accounted for is. There, there's where I'm, I'm going wrong. So that's 3,300. Okay, and we don't know how much this is, which gives me 3,000. Okay, so um, 3,300 less 2,200 means this here is 1,100, um, and then 3,300 less 3,000 gives me 300. So this there is 1,100. This is 300. Now notice I'm kind of like just doing this basically on the math side. I'm not even paying attention to uh, the descriptions. Okay, try to pay attention to the descriptions um, in order to, to know um, what we're talking about here. I mean, we're talking about beginning, uh, beginning prepaid insurance, and then we're adding in payments to get a total amount in the account. But then we want to know then we're jumping down to our ending balance and the difference between these two is what are, ends up being our insurance expense okay um, so that you know it's sort of like working on the state of retained earnings um, you know you have a, a beginning balance you add in you get a subtotal then you take out your dividends and then you end up with an ending balance okay and the difference between beginning and ending is your you know um, is that the profit or loss or uh, you know the change in your retained earnings um, so even though I'm doing this by a, strictly a math perspective okay um, where I'm not saying okay this is beginning and I'm not thinking through the uh, the process so much I can do this mathematically um, do kind of like be aware of what you're looking at and this is my beginning and I want to know um, how much I'm increasing in order to get to my total um, in the account. So 1,700 less 800 is 900. Okay, so I have a total in the account of 1,700. But then I'm, you know, my ending balance is going to be this 500. Well, how much am I expensing in order to get to my ending balance? Well, the difference between that is 1,200 in order to get down to the $500. Okay, is my ending balance. All right, so I hopefully hopefully my uh, making mistakes didn't throw you off too much there. Um, you know, go back and rewind and watch the video again. And if you still don't understand, you know, feel free to contact an instructor. And I'll see you in the next video for the next problem.